Welcome to another video. This is your Tactical Power Pro. For those new in the channel, I am an Air Force veteran, a former electrical power production technician, a former electrical engineer, and currently a YouTube certified generator tech. And today we're going to be working on this generator that is producing no power. It has no voltage whatsoever. So if you have a generator from around 2800 watts to 9500 watts that is producing no voltage, this right here is the video for you. So join me. Let's learn, let's repair that generator. Let's go. All right, so a few things you're gonna need to make this job quick and easy. is a socket and ratchet set. Honestly, you really just need the eight millimeter socket. I'm using the drill, so I'm just getting rid of this. You're especially going to need a multimeter so you can read voltage, ohms, definitely, so we can check resistance. For the test we're gonna do, you're gonna need one of these. And optional, I recommend a kilowatt meter, a kilowatt power meter. It's gonna come in uh, handy when we are uh, checking voltage at the uh, receptacle. Make it easier for us to see if we're producing voltage right now. All right, so let's start the generator and see if we got some voltage. We confirm we have no voltage. Let's go straight to the problem. We want to check. You're going to start here at the generator head. Okay, so I moved the generator from the lift to the workbench, so it's now more steady, and we have a better view of the generator head. You're gonna look for broken ropes on the stator and black color winding. If you see any of that, that tells you that the stator overheated, or if you see that on the rotor, tells you that the rotor overheated, and this probably uh, grounded somewhere in the winding. Once you do your visual inspection, let's say everything looks good with the rotor and stator, we're going to move to the carbon brushes. Look at the AVR, the voltage regulator. There's two leads coming out the regulator and goes to your carbon brushes. Red is for positive, white is for negative. We are going to remove the white lead, the negative lead. We want a little bit of the terminal showing. Are we going to tap it while the generator is running? And we should have some spark. Okay, so by doing this first test, I already know that I, pos I have a possible faulty voltage regulator. There is constant voltage going from the voltage regulator across the carbon brushes to the rotor. So every time I touch the terminal, I should have spark. But when I did the test, I had no spark, I had spark, I had low spark, then I had no spark, no spark. So that tells me there's a big high possibility that I have a faulty voltage regulator. But we're gonna keep on troubleshooting to make sure that our issue is the voltage regulator. So what's the next step? Let's check resistance or continuity across the carbon brushes 
and the rotor. So the next test, we're gonna do a rotor test. We're gonna check continuity, we're gonna check resistance across the carbon brush, through the sleep rings, rotor, and back. So we're gonna grab your multimeter, set it in ohms, grab your probes, put one on the positive side of the carbon brush, one on the negative side, and we check for continuity. And here I have 59 ohms. I should have anywhere between 45 to 75 ohms of resistance. If the resistance is in between this threshold, everything indicates that your carbon brushes, slip rings, and rotor are in good conditions. But if the resistance reading is less than 45 ohms, it means that the rotor is failing and you will need to replace it. Now, let's say you perform the rotor test and you have no continuity at all. You put your meter and something like this shows up. All right, if that's your case, you're going to proceed and remove your carbon brush. You want to inspect those carbon brushes. Once you remove them, they should be even. The lead must be salted in place. If your carbon brush looks anything like one of these, you like this one, it's missing one side. If it's uneven, Look at this one. If you look anything like this, your solder is not, not done. You gotta get rid of those and replace them with a better carbon brush. And now that we're here, you might want to take a look at the slip rings. See if you can see them there. These two right here. My God, the lighting is bad in here. I'm gonna take a look at those slip rings. They might be dirty. You can get a, a small, uh, uh, tiny cloth or some sandpaper, some fine sandpaper. You can clean it while you turn the engine slowly. And give them a good clean because they might be just dirty full of carbon i've seen a few generators that are not losing voltage and the issue was that that the the sleep rings were too dirty a good clean you get the continuity back and resistance between the 45 and 75 ohms connect everything back together all right so another quick way that you can identify a faulty or grounded out uh, rotor perform a continuity test to ground. So you go to your carbon brush terminal, one probe on the terminal, and the other probe you put into anywhere in the block or to a ground, and you should have no continuity at all. No continuity to ground. If, let's say, you are on the carbon brush and you touch the frame of a generator, a ground, and you hear a beep on your terminal, you got continuity on your, from your carbon brush to your slip ring rotor with a block that tells you that you have a bat rotor and that rotor is ground, grounding out somewhere in its winding. All right, so we check continuity through the carbon brushes, lip rings, rotor, rotor is not grounding. Everything looks good. The generator is still not losing power. This is another test that you can do to figure out if your voltage regulator is the issue. We're going to connect the leads back to the carbon brush terminals, positive on the positive side, which is your left, and negative 
on the negative side, which is the right on the carbon brush. We are going to start the generator. We're going to use the multimeter to test for DC voltage coming out the AVR, the voltage regulator, to your carbon brush. We should have anything over 15 volts DC. That's good. That's a minimum. You should have 15 volts DC minimum. It's an average. You'll see around 38 volts DC. But let's see how much we got on this one. Let's start the generator and perform the test. Performing that test, we saw that the voltage coming out of the AVR is 14.5 mini volts DC. Millivolts. So it's way under that 15 volts minimum that we need for the automatic voltage regulator start producing the magnetic field needed to create uh, AC voltage out of the generator all right to 100 percent confirm that we have a bad avr we're going to do a exciter field test and for that test we will have to remove the voltage regulator and we're going to look at the connection coming from the stator the two wires are the same color in this case we got two yellows and some generators have seen uh two blue wires if i'm not mistaken you're gonna we're gonna start the generator and we're gonna check for AC voltage coming out those two wires. We should have around four to eight volts AC, but depending on the generator, I've seen some generators with three volts, a little bit closer to the three volt range, uh, and still produce power. So let's let's start that test and see how much voltage we got coming out of the exciter field. Let's start the generator. Like I said, I see some generators on the three volt AC range that still produce power. So according to the test we just performed, everything points out that we have a bad voltage regulator. I'm going to remove it, replace it with a new one. Let's see if we were right. with the old and with the new
positive negative. All right, voltage regulator is set. New AVR is in. Let's give it a start. Let's see if we got any voltage. Cool, so we fixed that issue, but now I want to perform the test, the same test we just did, but let's see the results with a new AVR. New ABR is sending 37 volts DC to the copper brushes, which is perfect. And now you can see the difference between a good ABR and a bad ABR. If you have completed every step on this video and your generator is still not producing any power, here's another test that can help you troubleshoot that issue. And this is the stator test. To perform the stator test, we're going to remove the leads of the stator windings and we're going to perform continuity tests along each winding and to ground. So once we remove the winding, you can see that the first two, the black and white, they are winding number one and the other white and black is winding number two. They normally go with the neutral. Uh, connected together but we're going to separate all wires and we're gonna check continuity in between each wire so we get, we're good there we're going to ground we're good we should have no uh, continuity to ground we check the ground we're good now let's check winding number two to ground uh, along winding number two we're good now we're going to ground no nothing we're good so do that we shouldn't have any continuity between each winding if they are not connected together now that the generator is producing power let's put everything back together and perform one last final load test generator is running with some load it's producing 119 volts at 60 hertz which is great and that's it i hope you enjoyed the video follow each steps and you'll be able to identify why your generator is not producing any power not producing any voltage and please subscribe, like, share, comment, join the membership, get some merch, show some love, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.